And here we are. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Designer Show. I'm here with John and Renee, and it's a beautiful, lovely day here in Minnesota. I came uh, home to a winter wonderland. Yeah. In fact, I wanted to show that a little bit. Um, oops. Let me show you what I'm looking at, what I saw at my window when I was walking my dog this morning. Um, this is what my yard looks like. Oh, yeah. That, so, that looks like my yard only wow. snow that cool? a couple inches higher on the branches. Yeah. That. Is that cool or what? That is nice. So, yeah, the, the temperatures were just such that the, the snow was just accumulating on everything. Yeah, and no wind. Just, it's yeah. definitely a winter wonderland. So That's the kind of winter time I like. Yeah, yeah. So very cool. Mike says it's Friday. Yes, it is. Yep, yep. Of course, if you're when you're self-employed, it's just another hump day. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start working again tomorrow. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, John says, "Did you bring the beer? Uh, didn't bring any beer today." Uh, cool. Green and wet here. Um, wherever you are, Mike, I'm not sure where you are. So, yeah, no thanks for the snow, but it snows really cool when it's happening. It's just when you have to live with it for a long time, then it gets a little old. But it really is beautiful. Anyway, let me let me close that screen down and get back here. So um, I'm not sure if Robin will be joining us. I haven't heard from her, so we'll we'll see what happens. Anyway, but anyway, again, welcome everyone. And tis the season. We're not doing a Christmas show this year like we did last year. That oh, was kind that of fun. Was fun last year, wasn't it? That was kind of fun. Yeah, I had Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus on the show, and and uh, that was interesting. But uh, I don't know. It just all snuck up on on me so much. It's just kind of weird. Uh, which is okay, but part of the sneaking up that happened was this wonderful event we just finished. Um, uh, we had a class that we just finished this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We had, I think it was 17 of us all together in a room for three full days talking chief architect. And this is the first time we've done that in about three years. So it was really cool. Uh, here we've got a little picture of everybody in the class. It was kind of fun. So uh, and there's our gang right there. So good group of people. We had a ball and got to share lots of cool information about Chief Architect as well as other things. So looking forward to doing some more classes. So that'll be cool. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, let us, you know, if you guys are interested in live classes, set, drop, drop me an email. Let me know where you are. We'll see if we can put something together. Yeah, if, um, if anybody's at KIBS, IBS this year, let me know. I'll be there. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening with me, so we'll have to see what's going on there. Mm -hmm. We do have the, our big event coming up right after the IBS, which is our yeah. summit. So we're excited about that. Um, getting a good turnout in that. But if you want to learn a little bit more about the summit, just go over to chiefexperts.com and click the learn more button right here. And you can find out all about our summit that we've got coming up. That's a uh, two one week uh, total immersion event that we're gonna, you're gonna show up for seven, eight days and we're gonna just talk chief architect and sales and marketing and everything else that goes into your design business uh, for all, the, all that time. And I know Renee, you've got lots of cool things you're gonna share. Here's the gang that will take care of you. Uh, I think what we'll probably do here, if you guys are okay with it is let's, let's plan on doing a little a show sometime because people might have questions about some of the things we're going to do here. So we'll pop on a, uh, a presentation. I'll let everybody know about it. Maybe we'll do it in a week or two. We'll just get on and talk about this, what we're going to do. Yeah, we still got questions if you're planning on coming. Yeah. So we still got room available. Um, it is filling up. So if you're interested, you might want to get signed up as soon as possible make to make sure you get your spot. Anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up. So that is our summit today. We are going to do some, again, fun things, spin the wheel. Uh, this, you know, in a way, it's just the spin the wheel is kind of a fun way to do it when you don't have any kind of special topic that you want to talk about. And with Chief Architect, there's so many different ways you can go and so many different things we can talk about. And true with the design world, too. There's just so many things we could do. So uh, we just kind of kind of have at it here with uh, thinking a little bit uh uh, what do we want to call it? 
just have fun with it. Um, I do want to bring up real quick, uh, you, you, people, you guys may have heard about the new pricing structure that Chief Architect's uh, going to. Uh, they're going to do a subscription model. Uh, I was online last night looking at uh, SolidWorks, AutoCAD, uh, Solid or SoftPlan. Plan. Chief's still the cheapest one out there, mm. even on their new subscription model. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not cool for new users, for everybody that already owns Chief Architect. If you don't have a current software and support agreement, if you're behind or you've let it lapse, you might want to consider re, uh, getting your software and support agreement up to date so that you can be grandfathered in on the pricing that you already have. So I highly recommend it. Um, Right now it's $5.95 a year for the software support agreement. You'll be locked in at that price. Well, you'll be locked in at the software support agreement. I don't know if you'll be locked in at that price um, as long as you keep it current. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's the agreement that they're putting out with everyone. Which and, is the same, which is really the same thing as as the monthly subscription or yearly subscription. If you keep it current, then you have the software. If you don't, then you you don't. Right? Um from from my facebook group we've found a bunch of home designer pro users that are upgrading now so we've got yep. a bunch of interior designers that are going to be in the premier line yeah that works in your business model cool that's yeah. be coming forward i highly um, recommend it. i also heard that you can um not only can you do the rent to own and that carries forward as a legacy plan um but you can they also have a and this is the first time i've heard of it they also have a four month uh, yeah. um, financing. I bought, I bought one license like that. Yeah, it works good. Four month financing, so you just yep. pay what seven eight hundred bucks a month for four months, and you own it. Yeah, yeah, something like um, that. Of course, you're buying additional licenses, so that'd be right. a little yeah, less. Mine was cheaper because it's additional license. But... All right, so yeah, so guys, uh, if you're not current on your SSA, uh, don't let it lapse. So you don't <laughs> want to get hit up because I, I worked out the numbers. If you, if you were to buy a new license today. Um, at their thirty-two ninety-five price, and add one SSA, so now you're at uh, thirty-nine hundred. That's uh, about a year and eight nine months of two hundred dollar payments, of which the new software support agreement will be. After that, you're paying about three to four times as much as you would if, by keeping your SSA current. So oh, break even for a couple of years, and after that, it is not even close. Yeah. If you lease it for the 200 bucks a month, that's the same that, that the subscription is going to cost you for the first license. Yeah. Might and well do it. after two years, you, you own it. Yeah. 20 months or something like and that. And then you're, then you're 600 a year instead of 2000 a year. Right. So, so you might want to jump on that and, and do that. Uh, especially if you think you might need some additional licenses, you might want to do that now as well. Anyway. All right. Um, think about the toughest thing you overcame with chief. Renee, keep it simple. We're in my law from Krypton. <laughs> you call me out. <laughs> Good one, Mike. Um, yeah, let's come back to that. Uh, let me make another of that. Overcome. From, from a technical standpoint, I guess? Yeah, could be. Um, we'll think of, we'll let that one sink in a little bit. We'll come back to that. That's a good question, Mike. I like that. All right, so tis the season, and tis the season to spin the wheel. So let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, let me jump over here. Let's share our screen. And I've got some new icons on the screen. I've got topics one to five that we'll cover. So let's go spin it up and see where we land today. And our first one is that little page thing. With uh, the find and plan. Yeah. Uh huh find what in, what do you find in a plan anything you select find what what, what where do you off find of, it of from a, i think that's, off that's of a a, schedule that's in your edit that's in your edit toolbar yeah. and that's Oops. once you've selected i forgot to show uh, what a, a schedule it, row it, item a schedule yeah. you select yep. something in the schedule and then you yep. go find it in the plan well let's go back to a plan and check that out all right so here's the schedule so we know there's lots of schedules in Chief. Chief's schedules are phenomenal. They keep getting better and better. I think they're adding some new things in the next version too, uh, which I don't remember what they are right offhand. We're not supposed to talk about it anyway. Um, That's right. 
And uh, if you're not on the beta program, it, they're opening up a new round, I think. So if you want to get on Chief's beta program for X15, which is really solid, by the way, so I have no problem using it. Uh, I think you just, Brian, at chiefarchitect.com, or is it beta at chiefarchitect.com? Do you know what it is, Renee or John? I can look it up. Okay, if you look that up, that'd be great. Um, then you can get on the early program and, and maybe have some input into it too. So when you ever you when you have a schedule and you click on it, you'll see that icon right here. Okay, find something. Let's hover over that icon so we see what it is. Find object in plan. All right. So what that means is it's going to find the object in the plan. So if you click on something with multiple items, like this one has four of them, you see the quantity right here. Four. So if I click on that, it's going to find all of those items in my plan. So that's kind of cool. Now, um, I don't know how that works when you have items on each floor. I think uh, you have to do it twice. Yeah, I think you do too. But uh, you could do that. And you can also, you could set up your schedule if you wanted to, where you're just doing a schedule for each floor. So if you wanted to, you could say, just include all the objects in this schedule for floor one and not for the entire plan. Um, so here I would turn off, turn I would uncheck that and just say, just do the items on this floor. And that way you would have a schedule on each floor if that's the way you like to do it. So that gives you that option. So, but but it is really that is really a, a handy way to find the objects in your plan to uh, work on them. All right, let's go back to our wheel for a minute. We could go off on a whole bunch of other icons on that right now if we wanted to, but we're not gonna, I have discipline. <laughs> uh, email for getting on the beta is beta at chiefarchitect.com okay yeah if you just go there um if they uh, they'll look over you know just tell them you're interested and be part of the beta team you're using the program a lot you'd like to use x15 on some new projects um uh, yeah they'll send you a, a, a nda and also, also a little see. bit about it under chief talk under announcements oh that's true there. that's right that's where you go to Let's spin up the wheel here. <clears throat> Aha. I don't think we covered this one. I thought we covered this, but I'm not sure. Is that a terrain hole? Uh, we Yeah, we talked about that um, in another video, but not the icon. Yeah, that's a terrain hole. Yeah. Well, yeah, kind of, mm -hmm. sort of. Let's go look at what that one does. Because we uh, someone had a condition where there was a deck that was creating a hole that they didn't want to create, and you showed how to edit Exactly. That hole. So yeah. when you have a room... Um, uh, that's sticking out over the terrain. Let's see if I can bring up a view here on this. I think I have terrain in this plan. <clears throat> so you might have a cantilever. You might have a room. You might have a deck. So let me just rename this. Actually, let me delete the terrain. Let me rename this this deck a room kind of a name. So let's go name it a, a, a whatever closet. Okay, we don't really care. And then let's go add terrain to our plan. All right, so we're going to go add the terrain again. And what Chief tends to do when you do that, let me lower the terrain. Of course, this time it won't do it when I want it to, will it? Uh, let's turn off automatic and make that six feet. <clears throat> All right, of course, it's not putting the hole in there now. Sometimes it won't, it, sometimes it'll leave it blank underneath certain rooms. Okay. I don't know why it's not under this one. It should. Well, anyway, if that happens, when you click on your train, you'll see this little icon. But what Chief has done when you put the terrain around your house is, is it, think about it, it traces around the outside of your house and it puts a CAD box there. And, and a lot of times when you have a room, It'll put it around that as well. Okay. And it'll um, cut a hole in the terrain. Sometimes you need to be able to edit that hole. So when you click this icon, there's that hole in the terrain that Chief created when it did the terrain. It just had it turned off at this that point. Here you turn it on, and now we could edit the hole in the terrain. So if by some chance you had a situation where it wasn't showing the terrain under that object, you could pull that item back. You could reshape the hole that is the turn going around the house. Or if you need it open, you could do that too. Or a window well or something like that. Exactly. So 
So that's what that icon does. John had a question if we use door schedules, if, if we use the door schedules. Mm -hmm. so John, if you've got questions about that, go ahead and type your question in and we can talk about it. Do you guys use door and window schedules and cabinet schedules and all that kind of stuff? Um, uh, I mean, I'm a remodel contractor, so I definitely do. I like to show, I like to have the tag on there, the label on there specific to my schedule. And, yep. and also I'm in California, so sometimes I need energy code um, compliance listed in my schedule. Oh, yeah. You guys need to display your citizenship, your kids' <laughs> names, ages. <laughs> you were born. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. California, you guys have a few reg uh, requirements on your plan sets down there. So uh, schedules, I would assume, would be one of them. Uh, and and as chief schedules get better, more and more people are finding them and using them because they're really cool. They really do work well. Yeah. You know, as long as you're leave it to the owners, well, and that's fine. It's more about the plan checker. If the plan checker, for some reason, it helps them push you through, great. And then the contractors know to just do as they need to. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. It's all about the relationship you have with your contractors, right? If if we're in this field and and you're in this field long enough, you really should start getting to know the, the people that are building your your designs. Right. Yeah. You know, and some contractors may not be aware that you can do those schedules and, you right. know, they'd be willing to pay extra to have those done for them. Yeah. So it just depends on the project, depends on the client, depends on so many things. Over the years of all the thousands of plans I've drawn for people, I rarely use schedules. All right. People just oh, haven't really? wanted them. Yeah. Uh, part of it's just people I've drawn for. They just want basic plans, um, but they yeah. like the 3D aspect of it. So we do spend a lot of time on that. And but, so you just need the call outs on the windows and that's it. I mean, just your, you know, and, your six and, yeah, in many cases, but that's not to say I haven't done plenty of schedules over the years. So I have, it's just that I'd say the majority of the clients I've worked with haven't done them or they've done them themselves. I haven't yeah. done them as part of the plan. I pair the schedule down to the, to the, basically the size of it, size of the door and the swing of the door and leave it at that. Don't put yeah. any other information in it typically. All right. Good question. By, by the way, if you guys have questions, feel free to post them and we can easily start talking about them. Did I that. just did that one and I had forgot to hit the hide choice button. So let's do that again. <clears throat> number one. All right. Let me go to my list and see what I put down for is, number is one. Is the floor level uh, designator change reference no, floor? No, no, that's not. Uh, this is what he learned out of Coeur d'Alene. Oh, oh okay. well, no, not in this case. Oh, okay. Um, number one on my list was this one is how much do you charge for your design services? All right. This is a group question. All right. Okay. I, I would love to hear from everybody on the, uh, in the group, if you don't mind, uh, sharing you charge by the square foot you charge by the by the project you charge by the hour uh, robin says i charge a thousand dollars an hour <laughs> where's robin uh, she's not here oh. uh, and herself <laughs> so i <laughs> if you can um, get it by golly <laughs> i so i bid a range to complete and so far that's that's really worked um, and that's just based on historical data. What I know it's, you know, unless I get a project that I truly don't have any historical data for, I give them a range to complete and I usually fall in the low end of that range. Um, and if I feel like I'm going to dip into the high end of that range, I just let the client know that that's where it's headed. Okay. So how do you control the ex expectation from the client for what they're going to get for the complete? It's, you know, they're looking at, my service as a whole, you know, and, and I have, I happen to have a good presence online. I happen to have, you know, a website built out. So there's plenty to go on there. Um, but also just communication and getting to know them. I, I mean, when someone wants to hire me, I expect that we're going to start a relationship and, mm -hmm. and, and so that's it. I'm invested in that. And I, and I lead with that. This, this is a relationship. And then, and then the cost kind of comes by it. 
um, keeping in mind that the same thing goes for contractors as it does for designers. You can go get a bunch of bids from a bunch of different contractors, but if you look at the numbers on an Apple to Apple range, you're not going to see much fluctuation in price. It's mm-hmm. going to cost what it's going to cost. So yeah. but really, it's just about establishing who you are as a service. That's assuming you can get an Apple by Apple, Apple to Apple yeah. uh, comparison. So that's the hardest part. Um so I, I know everybody's going to be all over the place when I talk to different people about this. And kind of the reason I added to my list is uh, one of the people in our class the other day had a question about what he should be charging. And, and of course, John and I beat the heck out of him. Um, <laughs> because you know, he said he wasn't charging. <laughs> uh, yeah, or very little. Because um, he's and a design so, contractor. Yeah, we didn't really do that. We just we just talked with him. Um, but you know, it's, it's so easy in this industry for someone that's got a ton of experience to take that experience for granted. It's because we're around it every day and we're, it's just what we do every day. So we just kind of, that's just what we do. And we know this stuff and we think other people should know it too. Well, that isn't the case. So, I mean, we've all spent, you know, a lot of time learning chief, a lot of time learning our trade, our design. We go to classes, we have to get licensing in many cases. We have to do all sorts of different things that require lots of things. That's why we're professionals and we deserve to be treated and paid as professionals. So um, I'll just suffice to say that um, what I've seen happen is you'll see percentages of project um, will be charged. So like for new homes, um, uh, or sometimes remodeling. I'm seeing a lot of contractors at five to seven percent uh, for the whole design package as part of that. And the design package could be anywhere from your, you know, your, your conceptuals for them, final details with all of the everything up the permitting. Um, you can break that down if you want to. Uh, I've seen hourly, so we are seeing plenty of people doing hourly. I see Sandy's at 125 to 150. Cool. Way to go, Sandy. Um, and I've seen ranges from, you know, if you're below 75 doing this self-employed, you need to raise your prices probably. Um, but you can also compare yourself, look at the cost of a project, look at how much, you know, at a percentage price, you know, if you're charging by the hour for a project and then you, do the same thing based on a percentage. What percentage are you coming in at? Are you coming in at a half a percent, a 1%, 2%, 5%? Mm-hmm. Um, that's a, one way to just judge if you're charging enough for your hourly rate. As you get faster with Chief, your hourly rate can probably go up. Um, so there's all sorts of things that come hey, into and, play. And if you've been showing up every other Friday, you, you should already be like 10% faster this year. Yeah, exactly. there you go. Yeah. At least, at least. And if you come to the summit, what, what's the guarantee? The loose guarantee. The, the loose, the loose yeah. guarantee. <laughs> yeah. well, you'll be exponentially faster. We would say that. I, I looked at my numbers from uh, X8 to now, and yes, I'm 600 percent faster. Yeah. Than I bet you are. When I was an X8. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, you know, if you're charging, um, you know, two bucks a square foot for a house plan, not not saying that's what you charge. If someone charges two bucks a square foot for a house plan that used to take 20 hours and now you can do it in six. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's, a, that's a testament to your skill. Plus the tools that chief has given us between exactly. both versions. Exactly. It, it so. Also, if you charge per square foot, don't work in California. We've got a thousand square foot house in California. Take you as long as a six hour <laughs> house. Somewhere else. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And the, okay. We won't even go there. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So there's lots of different ways. And the other, you know, you got, so you got by the hour, square foot, by the project, uh, percentage of projects, there's lots of different ways to do it. So um, it, part of it, the biggest problem I think a lot of people have with charging what they're worth is it's, it's up here. They're just yeah. the self-imposed doubt. Um, that's a big part of it and not knowing how to sell. Okay. So kind of keep all of those things in mind. We're not going to dive into that right now. I just thought I'd add. Let's put that one on the wheel and we'll see what it's a good one. On. Yeah, so kind of fun. All right, back to our wheel. Um, oh, number five, <laughs> another number. All right, how do you do spiral duct work? Oh, that was a good one we covered in class a little bit. Yeah, 
Anybody know how to do that? You know how to do that, Renee, don't you? You probably have a whole uh, library. Don't they have a bonus that. catalog for that? You, well, I'll, I'll say right away, you can't do it out of cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, don't they have a bonus catalog for Spiral they, Duckwork? They do. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's go over there. So uh, it's a uh, it's actually done with pieces or, so if we go into the library here, it's done with pieces or molding, molding right? You can do it both ways. Um, so if I go spiral, and that should come up here. That's so that's a bonus catalog. All right, I got to get to the right part. There's there it other is. spiral things. Where is it? You passed one. It was at the top. Did I? Oh, yeah. there it is. Okay. So I'm going to right click on this item. See, I search, but now I want to see what else is in the library. So I'm going to hit Show in Browser, and let's see what else we got in this spiral duct library so yeah so they've got other things here too so different connections things like that but here's the spiral duct and when i bring that over to my plan let me open a new plan here just get a plain and simple screen going now that's right i've still got my old uh playing with my template here so if i take this duct that you see here come on and i grab it and I try to place it in my plan, you, see, you can't place it like a regular symbol. What you do is you start dragging, you start drawing lines with it. Now, you noticed it created a, a, a box. So let me bring this up as a four-sided object, uh, or sorry, as a 3D view. <laughs> and you'll see what I'm talking about. So that's what it drew. Why did it do that? Well, it's because when I selected it from the library, it chose this symbol, molding polyline. All right, let's go back to the floor plan. You see, that's the symbol that when I grabbed it from the library and started drawing, it chose that. Let's switch this to the line option, molding line. Do the same thing. I just clicked on it in my library. Now I can draw it out as an individual item. All right, so Chief's going to attach that ductwork to that line that i just created and that's so, if you select the tool first it'll do that yes interesting yeah i know i just discovered that the other day when, in class when we were talking about this when so, i add a molding to the library and i draw with it it always will do that but after a while it reverts back to its square molding and i didn't know you could select it and then select the library and, yeah yeah so it, okay. i think it's kind of always done that but we've never really realized that it was doing that um, okay i didn't um until I, I did figure that out one day as i was punching around with chief so keep in mind everything you can do to any cad line to edit this you can do to this molding polyline so if i want to put a break in this line right here and i want to bend that over and i want to make that rounded i just kind of i can convert that to a arc and i could go like that now i've got bringing it around like that so it a, makes it really easy to work with. You put a chamfer on it too, can't you? Yeah, that's what, yeah, exactly. So I yeah, we could use the uh the tools for for uh, fillet and chamfer. Uh, fillet and chamfer. So yeah. if you just set your distance here, so I want a 24 inch corner there, so I could do that too. And there's yeah, my, your, there's your, my uh, chamfer. Fillet has to be bigger than the diameter of the pipe, though. On the in yeah, depending on if you're gonna if you're on an inside curve or an outside curve. Right. Your fill, it's going to be a different size. Right. I think that, that goes That's what we saying. figured out. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, so there you go. So that was number five. How do you do a spiral ductwork? And again, you've got the library full of those other items that you can add to your ducting. Um, I, I, a lot of times I'll show ductwork in a plan. And even on this sample plan I had open here, uh, I have shown a little bit of ductwork in the foundation. So here I had thrown in some ductwork. So if I go to my um, HVAC and plumbing plan, now I show my heat runs as pink and my cold runs as light blue. It just kind of, that's just the way it is. So so if I were to bring up a 3D view of that, that would all be in 3D as well. So the challenge has been put out there, Dan. Make it go vertical now. Maybe. No, no, these are just, no. I'm not going to do with this. You could with a part, though. I could with a part, or I could go in the elevation and draw a line going yeah. up. 
yeah. but you, you cannot take yeah i i know exactly what you're talking about believe me i've wanted to do that many times where i could break I, the line and pull it up in z all right but you can't do i that. can't i can't wait till they fix that that's got to be coming yeah you, you could do it with parts you could make an elbow part that goes the right direction exactly or, or rotate it rotate yep. a symbol and yep and i've done that the pipe but yeah, there's really no reason in chief with this advanced stage and its new cost that we shouldn't be able to draw straight up to. So um, I got to believe they're working on that. I mean, we've got the new polyline solid box, which does a lot of cool things. I and yeah, and John asked, can you fill it? Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about that when he asked. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Um, yeah. exactly. So it's just, again, remember, it's every th it's not a piece of duct work. It's a round box with their with their symbol on it that's attached to a CAD line. So anything you can do to a CAD line, you can do to that. So if you need to fill it a corner, absolutely. I could take this whole box here and hit the fillet tool and set my distance. And I'll make it um, gee, it's the outside corner. So I'll make it 36. And I'll click, click on the corner. I'll do it to all edges at once. There we go. So now I've filleted all of them and uh, works great. You see a lot more of that kind of duct work in projects these days. Even in residential, you're seeing quite a bit of that stuff. All right. Any other questions on that one? Not so far. Not so far. Okay. Let's get out of here and get back to where am I going here? Here we go. Okay. Back to our wheel. We can't see it. There it is. There we go. The wheel. All right. I think I turned that one off. So let's spin her up here. Hmm. I keep getting the damn numbers. I want these icons. Come on, it's a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> what did I put down for that one? The International Builder Show. Huh. If you guys are going to the IBS, the International Builder Show, and I put this on my list and I didn't double check it. So we better do this right now. Um, if you go on the show, make sure you go to Chief Architect's website. They always used to give away free tickets to the show. They do. Um, they okay. do. So, they, so yeah. they are there yet. All right. Come yeah. On. Let me get the screen adjusted. So if we go to chiefarchitect.com and you go to, oh, they would keep that. Um, it's probably under their events. So let's go to their events. Webinar and training seminars. Uh, let's go up to the pull down on the top. I, I think I just searched IBS and Chief Architect. Did you? Okay. Um, I could probably just do that here. You had events and training right there. Yeah. Let's just search IBS 2019. Uh, 2023. There you go. Second one. Oh, okay. There we go. Yep. Complimentary, Complimentary show, show tickets. tickets. Boom. Drop here that link go. in the comments. Here we go. I'll grab that. <clears throat> <clears throat> that must be their id right there all right here we go there you go so so you can get your free show tickets so i think that saves what is the admission to the thing 175 bucks or something like that i'm not sure it's i've it's, always it's, done free free ones for i know me too the show, <laughs> to get in the show in the past has been like 50 dollars. Mm -hmm. i thought yeah, I talked to someone at class, and she said they paid one hundred and seventy-five dollars. Oh, they might have done the the one that um, includes um, the training access and stuff. I don't think that's what she said, but anyway, uh, whatever it is, you're going to save a few bucks by doing that. And uh, kudos to Chief for doing that, and and a lot of manufacturers do that. It's not hard to find free tickets to the show to get I'm, in. I'm going to get just some, some limited one-on-one -on -one training when I'm there. So if someone's at interested, the, uh, at their booth. Um, not at the booth. I might do it after after show hours or figure out a way to set up somewhere. Okay. So cool. Um, all right. So let's I'll, I'll be at the booth for a good amount of time. Just I bet you will. Talking yeah. crap to Scott Harris. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give it to him. I wonder if Dermot will be there. All right. Anybody know what this icon is? You know what it is, you just don't recognize the icon. Right. Right. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Yeah, you do. You know how it works. It is called 
export that, that export 3d viewer file I, I, uh, okay there, there you go so i uh, got you a little bit a little bit all right let's go um let's go over to chief and we'll show what that is so when you're working on any project um and you bring up a 3d view so let's just bring up i'll just bring up a, a one level overview okay at any time um in a 3d view you can go export there's that icon a 3d viewer file so this is great because you can export a 3D model that you can send to your clients, subs, anybody that you want to. You can send a link to um, and they can zip around your 3D model, look at things. Um, the cool thing about it is you're not giving away your plan. Uh, there's no dimensions involved here. It's just a 3D model that they can look at. So depending on what stage of the yeah. project you're in, um, it, it really does make a difference. Oh, you have to be you have to be in a 3D view to get that option, though. You can't do it from a plan. Right. Hang on, let me log into my account. Let's see if I remember my password. I, I did. Um, all right. So what'll happen is you you have your model up, and you're gonna either create a model or re replace a model. So you see, I've got quite a few here. I think you can have up to 95 projects at a time on the list before you have to start deleting some. But I'll create a new one, and I'll just call it Sample Plan. You can put a bunch of notes in. You can include all sorts of cameras. You can label these cameras, too, um, if you go to the floor plan and label them. And then they'll show up on the client's uh, end as a list of items that are labeled so they can click on things to get around the model if they want which for a lot of people makes it much much easier a lot easier yeah um, this is really important your surface count in the file size um, if your surface count is huge it gets really large on a big project it's not going to work it's just going to bomb out on the system and not even gonna, it's not even going to open the file it's not, not even going to convert the file so you do have to watch your surface count. You might have to turn furniture off, fixtures off, things like that. Anything that produces large amounts of surfaces, you really got to watch that. Um, uh, and then file size too, that matters. So just if you have a lot of um, things in your plan that are uh, making the file bigger, pictures, PDFs, CAD files, things like that, you might want to whittle those down a little bit. All right, then we just go ahead and uh, type in the name, hit OK. And it's going to upload all this to the chief uh, servers. And this is part of your SSA now. This is why you want to keep your SSA current. Because if you don't, you won't be able to do this. <clears throat> so some and, clients have trouble navigating that. Do, do, do you guys know if chief has a... Uh, do it on a computer. Video? Do it on a computer. But does but, chief have a video that we can send our clients to teach them how to use I'm, it? I'm sure they do. So when you get to this point and it brings up this little menu, don't click the OK button because it'll close the screen and nothing will happen. You'll go, what the hell? Uh, click this link instead, and this will take you to your library. If you want to look at it right away. If, if you want to look at it right away. But typically, we figure that's what you were trying to do anyway, so we would assume that's what you wanted to do. Unless you're like John, updating it every day and sent, letting his clients go look at it every day, then he probably oh, yeah. doesn't do that. He just says, oh, okay, sure. goes about getting lunch. <laughs> yeah, of course, you're talking Johnny. Yeah, he does that. Oh, John, time. right here. Says he uses that every day. Oh, okay, cool. Um, okay, so here it is, remodel, remodeling sample. sample. Um, if you want to share it, you make it public. And then when you open that dialogue, the make public dialogue, you will have the option to, um, where'd it go? Oh, no, I'm, I need to hit the share button. So now I'd have to make it private, but I can share now. Now you have the option for direct link and email or embed. So you can embed these things on your web page if you want to. Or you can also, I think, embed them. You can use that embed. No, you just use the link on Facebook, I think. And Facebook will share it just fine. But here's your embed link. Um, I think here is where you might find um, some training for it. Okay. It's, part of, it's part of the email right here. I think that's what it is. Um, but so that's how you would get that. You just copy that link, send it to your client. I do this. I do use this with a lot of my clients. Um, if you want to see what it looks like, you want to click the view button. And again, depending on the size of the file, it might open right away. And it might take a while. I always recommend to, for people to look at it on their computer with a mouse. It's just so much easier. 
to work with, but you can open it on your phone. You can open it on a, a pad and it will work too most of the time. It just depends on the model. Now here I only imported the floor overview. I didn't import the whole house. Um, and then I'm not going to go through the controls here right now, but the first thing you'd want to do is hit standard under rendering techniques and that'll put the materials on it. So you'll see the materials in the project. That just looks a lot better. I wish it would come up to that, but I understand it takes a little more horsepower to show the, the texture textures. So that's why they don't bring that up right away. But anyway, so again, there's there would be your list of cameras that you would have if you've included those. Any notes that you've included um, can be there. Um, and I believe the client and you can add notes in this too that will um, stay in the model. Uh, so there you go. And there's all sorts of different ways to look at it. We're not going to get into that right now, but I just wanted to, a lot of people aren't even aware that that, that is, function is there. So again, you can have up to 99 models um, uploaded at any time. Any questions about that? So, different question. No questions about uh, that. Too, it's creating a new wall style that has everything. Uh, I'd probably create a new wall style, have two separate walls. That's what I, I would. Yeah, it used to be we had to use two separate walls, um, but now you can see now you can use one wall. You could have um, your drywall framing air gap, fr you know, drywall framing, fr drywall air gap, drywall framing. Yeah, not all that drywall. uncommon too to have um, some kind of recessed feature in in just one party wall and not the other. You know, one portion of that one yeah. wall, but not the other. So yeah. Whether or not you do that or use two walls, I don't think it really matters. So you could create a single wall and just call one of them for a third wall. So if you put two walls, as long as the two walls are touching, yeah. as long as they're touching, you know, you, you put air gap on one of the walls, and make sure that that's touching the other wall. Then it'll act like a name yeah. one of the walls a third wall and everything will work just fine. So I don't think there's your square footage for that for the rooms true that that right that well the third wall goes it it goes past the third wall to that um so th there's some issues doing it either yeah way. i know what you're saying so when you do a foundation um you put third walls against the block um it's going to count the square footage to the block not to the third right. wall okay. so so you do have to watch that um that's where you might use cad boxes to calculate your square footage mm -hmm. uh, yeah. just to make sure all right um, we unless there's, unless there's the something wheel. weird going on, having a wall type that has both wall structures in it's the best. Yeah. All right. We're getting, we're doing we're well hit number three. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> it's going to come. Ah, you hey. Didn't. All, All right. right. That's a new one. Yeah. This is a new one in X14 that was one of the nicest tools that I use all the time that I'm sure, sure glad they added that. So when you're working on a model, um, yeah of any kind. Um, I'll go ahead and do it on this one, even though I, I don't want it to be, but I'll do it anyway. So Chief added this icon right here under the framing. It's build all framing. So what we used to have to do in all the previous versions was we have to we had to open this dialog and then we had to go here, build the framing. And then we had to go here, build the framing. Um, and we had to go build the framing. So we had to go through each of these and turn on build the framing. All right, which was in itself not that big a deal, but it took time. Now all we have to do is, you know, I'll switch to my framing, which I already have framing in my plan. Um, I'll show all my framing. Uh, now all we have to do is click build all framing, and that's what it does. It builds all the framing in your plan at once. Done. You don't have to mess with clicking all those different buttons anytime. So when you're looking, when you want to see what your framing looks like, that's it. One click and you're done. So works really well. Um, let's see what I got here. Yep, there's all the framing. Trouble is that's a remodeled house. I don't want it all remodeled, all framed. So how do you get so, rid of that all at one time now? So we go edit. Delete all. Delete, yep. uh, delete. Edit, delete, um, object, delete object, switch is, there it is. <laughs> and we there go to our framing and framing. Just Bam. turn it all on and hit delete down here at the bottom and it's all gone now. Yeah. So it does, it's a really nice way to do it when you're working on a project. You just want to see how Chief's doing with its framing. 
Is that framing it left on there? It does look like framing is left on there. Maybe it's blocked or um, referenced. No, it's referenced? that's my. I've added that manually. Why is it not? Why didn't no. it like that? Oh, interesting. This is not roof rafters. Hmm. I don't know why I didn't delete that. Well, um, so that that new icon is really nice. Yeah. All right. All right. This one, SCH with an open door. All right. So that's open schedule from an item that's in a schedule? Well, I can't quite remember. Back to this. So when you click on a schedule. Oh, that's open row item. Is that what that is? Exactly. Yeah. Open row object. Row object. So, open so if row you're object. looking at something and I want to, you know, I've got these cabinets and there's four of them and there's something about them I need to change. Maybe I need to add a code or a manufacturer or something, or I need to change the size. This is true for anything on any schedule. So it's not just cabinets. So you have normally down here, you would have open dialogue, you know, op open the dialogue to do things. But now we have here open an object from whatever I've clicked on the schedule. Okay, so that I can click on this. And now it's going to open up the information about the item or items that I have selected on that row. I so if you had a quick comment comments. or something like that you needed to add in, you don't even yep. so I could get, go to the schedule. down here to components and I can throw a code in there or a comment, change, you know, whatever I want to change. And that will update on my schedule then automatically. I, I have Plus, something to add to this. There's, yeah. there's some other tricks you can use with that open row object, which is, you know, a schedule is only going to, um, it's going to group items by, um, will you open that up real quick? I want to see yeah. the, uh, the option in the schedule, uh, just the schedule. You want itself. to open the, open schedule? the schedule? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when I hit the open. So object. we have group similar objects checked and, and because group similar objects is checked, if you remove in your columns to include, if you remove a bunch of those, it's going to then you know, group items based on the only available columns that are in the include section so that you can really narrow it down to something specific and then open row objects, make your edits, and then go back and include those columns to include. So if you've got a really complex set of plans and you've got some kind of, you know, funny little thing that you want to apply to all things and it's, it's an approach I've used a couple times with, yeah. with that open row object tool. I could see you could probably create a second schedule with just those columns on, on understanding you're going to have multiple callouts yeah. um, un until you delete that one schedule. So that'd be another way to do it without having to change the rows all the time. Yeah, there. Um, like I, I have a blocked schedule in my library that I drop in every once in a while. I, okay. I shift selected my schedule, I blocked it, I added it to my library, and it's only got several rows selected so that cool. I can get a quick selection. So you cool. have a unique schedule set up to do that instead of yeah. going into this yeah. one and changing yeah. it all the time. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Can you also under match properties can, is a schedule the schedule that it's on one of them? Like if you selected a cabinet in the plan. And match properties is schedule one of those. Click, click on your match properties and see what the options are for schedule. Uh, uh, the yellow box is on the bottom. Oh, this the dots. Yep. And um, schedule you one of the options there. Yep. Schedule number, schedule. Geo seven. Not the schedule okay. type, though, is it? Right. So there's a couple things that you can't get with match properties. Schedule categories. Including the schedule, schedule category, schedule number, schedule, simple schedule number. Yeah. So you um, might have to check two or three of those boxes to get it to yeah. come up. All right, cool. Again, that's just part of all of the things that keep Chief keeps doing to improve their schedules. I've been having trouble if I select more than one one thing like a ceiling elevation and a floor elevation mm -hmm. and then trying to go apply properties to more than one it doesn't do both it only does one so i don't know if that's a, a glitch or what it seems like that's that's from when they gave us the the wall elevation is clipped to room and yeah they kind of distinguish the two as separate entities now hmm. 
Like if you try to pull a wall elevation outside of the building envelope, it'll tell you it can't do it. And do you want to switch to a cross section? Hmm. All right. Charles says, I wish you would get rid of the DIY on the splash screen, splash green, splash screen. Looks kind of, um, Charles, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. There. That's why we brought up that. Uh, um, oh, what, what did you put? They had the, the chief green with uh, the door on it. From the client side, maybe? Does the client see that? We're not talking about um, when we hit the, um, where's it? From, your, from the 3D viewer side, does it show DIY to the client? Because that'd be kind of goofy. Oh, okay. That's what he's talking about. Um, the Charles Lewis. Go back, your, go back to your wheel. Huh? Go back to the wheel. <laughs> Why? What's on the wheel? Didn't have the icon. Dance, on the wheel. monkey. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where am I? Where'd my wheel go? Here it is. Um, what do you want to know about uh, that? I guess it's not on there. He brought you. You've hidden it, so it's not there anymore. For those people here that have never streamed before, it is a challenge sometimes. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> keep everything straight. Well, yeah, I'm looking at three screens we were talking right now. About since the 3D viewer thing where it had the green door. Oh, the yeah. Green yeah. And the door on it. That's when he made that comment. So, yeah. Okay. But it doesn't I think it have, might say it, it on the 3D red viewer right though. Huh? Yeah. Maybe not. Here, let me know. go. I can go. Do I have that open yet? Um, does it say I think, DIY? Here? I, you see, I don't know if it's the same viewer for the program. We need clarity, <laughs> Charles. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for a professional. Yeah, like, oh, DIY. You do it. oh, yeah. No, that's it lame. DIY. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Send that in as a as a thingy. Yeah. That shouldn't be on the chief architect no. one. I agree. agree. Maybe on the home designer one, but not chief architect. Exactly. Good point. All right. Let's go uh, spin the wheel again. Here we have somebody laughing at us. Who would laugh at us? <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's number three. There's number three. All right. What did I have down for that? Let's see. Um, <laughs> talk about getting way out. Let's squirrel on this one. Do you think there will be a slowdown in the economy? Well, you've been doing some shows about that. Um, a little bit. Yeah. We got a bunch of layoffs over here in California now at Google. Um, but I don't know what that means for the economy. I don't know. Diversified. I've, had, I've worked with a few guys that um, their new home plans are slowing down dramatically. Uh, they've never, you know, of course, it's been a long time since we had that last downturn. So it's hard to think back what happened then. Obviously, new home plans went away back then. Most of, you know, most, back in 2008, most of the people around me, which it's a pretty small market around here. Mm hmm went to north dakota and built stuff for the oil fields when that oh yeah happened. yeah yep so um if you're willing so, to move outside of your comfort zone and do something different you'll be fine if, if you're not well, willing to do that it's going to be a struggle so the person i talked to i said well um do you do remodeling plans and he said no not much so i said well maybe you want to consider doing more right you know start yeah diversifying more into doing remodeling yep. doing as builds Maybe add Matterport as part of your portfolio. Maybe, you know, add what other products can you add to your shelf? I think yeah. we've done some shows about that. Um, yeah. and we've talked about that, but it's just be aware. I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to slow down. Maybe not now, maybe two years from now, maybe 10 right. years from now, but it will. I mean, it's just that up and down cycle that our economy always goes through. Right. You know, it's just the way it is. And, and go organize your files. I'm sick of organizing them for you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> get, get your marketing in place, get uh, start contacting yeah. past clients. Um, you know, I talked to a lot of guys that are proud of the fact that they never had to market their business because they've always been busy uh, until the day that they work themselves out of work and they don't have any new leads coming in. So um, don't don't make sure you make that a priority. All right. Don't let yourself get caught with no leads in the hopper. Remodeling's up, new homes are down. Yep. Like I said, yeah, I'm, I'm getting outside your comfort zone. get some remodel calls. Yep. Yeah, I like doing remodeling. I've always done remodeling. All right, that looks like a hospital bed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what would it that is. be? Yeah, I guess when I just popped up, I thought, oh, it looks it's like a, a hospital railing. bed. It's a it, railing. It, 
It looks like you, add a railing to a landing. Yeah, you are exactly right. So whenever you create a stairway um, and you put a landing in it, or you just create a landing, you go to the stair tools, um, which are right here, and you create a landing. And you click on one of the edges of the landing, you'll see this icon right here. Right now, it looks yeah. like uh, remove. remove railing. So I could do that. And you'll see now that the railing is gone. But when I click on that edge again, now we get the hospital bed that allows us to put a railing back on yeah. that edge. I'm surprised so, I don't just use the molding icon that they use for everything else. Yeah, well, they do that with a few other icons, too, that they yeah. use some different, a little bit different. But the same same exact principle, because the landing is basically a, a molding item. or It's not really a molding item. It's a 3D object with railing on the edge. So when you open the dialog, if you wanted the railing off on all the edges, you could say no railing, um, no railing and apply it to all edges. So yeah. that's the other thing you can do, which which is nice when you just want to have a plain old landing floating out there that you're going to work with. So that one. I, I can't wait till we get to talk about X-15. I know. There's, there's some cool things coming. Yeah. I can't wait to grow my grass. Then they have to mow it. <laughs> <laughs> we won't even spin the wheel. That. What do we got? Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking. All right, get back here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we won't quite get through all of them, but we're getting close. Yeah, that's about as all right. Oh, that's another new tool. 3D. That's a new one in X14. Chamfering a 3D. Yep. So whenever you have a new, whenever you have, you're using the 3D solid tool, and you draw a box. And I really haven't even done a lot with this, but it does work. Let me actually just draw it in 3D right here, which is kind of cool. And I can draw it up and give it a height. So just like we I can, like that action. It's it's different yeah. when you draw it from a wall, but I like that one. That yes. Draw it Catch up almost. Yes. So when I when I'm working on these kinds of objects, if I wanted to round the corner here, um, make it a curb or something like that, there is your your fillet tool and there's the fillet 3d tool okay you could do one edge or you could do all the edges so same basic one so i could click this and then i click on another edge uh, let's see did i not get it i think i have my fillet set way too high let's go in here and now i have to set the fillet here first I'm surprised i can't just click on that one to set it but there's your edge and you could go around and do more edges at once if you want to and there you go so can see. you show us that i've never used that action that you just uh when you put that on there can you show us how you did that <laughs> when you first put that solid on there i've never done the two actions to get them both at the same time oh yeah it's when you, you start by drawing the shape and then when you let go of your cursor just pull up or okay. let go of your mouse button you pull up so hold your left mouse button to start Yep, draw it where you want it to stop and then drag up and yep. it's kind of like drawing a roof baseline. You let go and then you click when you, you're done. Okay. And now you've got it the height you want. So That's let, let me try one other that. thing with that. So if I draw the shape and pull up and hit tab key, oh, it doesn't work. No tab key for this one. That'll be coming next, right? Here it, does. Here it works. So I could do it on the floor plan. I can do a tab key so I can make this what I want it to be. Um, oh, I, I've um, I've put that in as a report, by the way. Did you? Okay. Yeah. Didn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. No. So that's why you put it in as a report. All right. So that was that key. Let's go back here. Well, we're making good progress today. <clears throat> one or two more, and we're done. Let's see what comes up. We got the. Oh, that one's going to be a fast one. Huh? That one's going to be a fast one because we couldn't find it. Well, that is true. That's an icon that's in their library of icons, but it's not in the program. Wait, what? <laughs> what does yeah, it do? It is. Where is it? Can you tell me where? Yeah, it is? that is. That's the new replace um, from library. Um, no, that's not uh, replace from library. Linking. That's not. No. Replace oh, well, from that library. Was a link. Yeah, replace from library is. Uh, wait, is wait, the, wait. Uh, is um, where is it here? 
Let me find something I can replace from library toilet. Yeah, that is in that is in it. By the that's, way, I'll show you exactly right. where that is. Okay, show me. Let's see. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll, what I'll it does, you. what it does, and this is one of the cool things in Chief. So actually, one of the coolest things in Chief that they've added in a long time. Um, it should, you know, it could be on the toolbar down here, but the same function. If we click on a view on a viewport on the layout and open its dialog, it's the same as this button right here, relink. All right. So what that does is allows us to link any viewport to anything on this oh, list. I stole your screen. Yeah. Sorry. Let's, let's okay. You can have it in just a second. Um, so if I wanted to, I could replace that floor plan with a anything, a camera. So if I wanted to get this camera to show up in that viewport, I could do it right here by replacing that. Let's see if it pops up. And so at any time, you can relink any viewport to anything on that list. Really a nice function of how that works. So, Renee, did you find where, where am I on the right yeah. track with that icon? Um, so, oh, my magnifier doesn't work in this. Funny. Um, and my edit toolbar is super tiny. But if you select a call out link and it's linked, that icon is going to show up there it's in your edit toolbar. It's a call out link. Okay. Yeah. So it's I'm a little bit, I'm kind of on the right track, but a little bit off. I'm yeah, and that's relink one. view. I'm clicking on the right. Where is that? We couldn't find that in the toolbars list, though, to put on our toolbar. Where, where is it? It's it's in your it's in your edit toolbar once you've selected a call out that's been linked. Only available there, okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's a call out that's linked. Um, no, we won't get into that right now because we're basically out of time. Um, I'll go spin one more time and we'll and come you up select with multiple what, viewports what on this. your layout. I have only done one at a time. Depends on what you want to do with it. Can you select? Yeah, if you're trying yeah. to read link a bunch of things, you can you can select a whole bunch of them now and change the the scale of it. Where you so, couldn't do that before. So I could select all of those and and uh, move them, change them, put them on different sheet. I could select these three right here, which we don't see the 3D image in, and refresh them. Um, I could select those two and rescale them. I think they have to be the same kind of viewport, probably. Um, let's see if I go here and I yeah, open those. the dialog. Yeah, see, I could change the scale for those two at once. So yes, you can do you can group select them, but you can only do certain things. Yeah, in types. order to rescale them more than one at a time, you have to go to the dialog. You can't do it from the toolbar right. at the bottom on the toolbar. All right, we'll come back to that one another time. Um, because we need more than just a minute to discuss that. Let me spin one more time, and then we'll call it a day. Um, and what we got here? This is the one that is, um, you guys know what that one is, right? Transform replicate. Yes. And the reason I wanted to show that, and I think we've talked about it a little bit, is since it's an icon that you want to use a fair amount, okay, transform replicate, if you don't know what it is, you should learn it. Um, it opens this dialog box to do all these things, but there's no hotkey associated with it. So what I do is I associate the letter T with transform replicate, transform replicate letter T. So you go to customize, you go to tools, custom toolbars and hotkeys and customize hotkeys. And we're gonna just go um, type in transform. You're going to highlight this. That'll be blank there. And you're going to type the letter T down here at the bottom. And then you're going to sign that command, that keystroke, to that command of opening that dialog. And so whenever, T by default is to temp dimension, so it'll get rid of that. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need that one. So just say, I couldn't remember if there was something I was replacing or not. So anytime you want to use transform, replicate, hit T, and it opens a dialog, and you can copy, move, rotate, resize, reflect. Um, it's a really good dialog that you really need to use. Great amount. for moving things in the Z axis. Yeah. Cool. Everybody, thanks for being here. Uh, hey, I, I want to yeah. answer MM2's earlier question. Uh, what's the challenging oh, thing? Oh, yeah. 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 I got a quick response to that, and it's, it's kind of a, like a holistic response is – um, biggest challenge was for me is you have this tool, which is Chief Architect. It does everything under the sun, knowing what you need to include to get your plans through your county or municipality, to get your plans to your contractor that's buildable. 
there's a big difference between knowing what you need to include versus including everything you possibly could, which is everything under the sun. You know, that was the biggest challenge for me was my plans only have what I need to include in there. I don't include any extra information just because the program can do it. Yeah. I mean, you've got, and that's a great point because you've got to get a set of plans built. You have to go through a process where you're going to design it and lay it out. You've got to get it through the municipalities. Then you're going to give your plans to your, your tradespeople, your carpenters, your mechanics, and they have to be able to look at the plans and go, Oh, I need to do this. Bam. And then it's done just like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> and my, my biggest thing probably is related to that. And it was get wrapping my head around layers, layer sets, uh, default sets, save plan views. Yeah. And making sure that when I have a, have a page set up the way I want it, I don't go screw it up by changing it somewhere else. So I'll just suffice by saying squirrel. Yeah. You've been <laughs> in it since day one. So like, you, you gradually learned the whole thing. I did. I grew up with the program. So I, I, that's how I've got to learn all these little little I've, things that happen with it. But the toughest thing when you're working on a plan is all the distractions that you get all day long, all exactly. the time, not just <laughs> outside sources, but my own. Right. Yeah. I, you know, you're, um, waiting for, you're waiting for chief to do something. I'll go check my email. Yeah. And then we'll come back. You're back to where you are. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So everybody here watching us is doing the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're all working on their plan while they're kind of watching us. So I was, uh, I was, I was there watching, watching all the students in the class the other day, just thinking, man, these guys are so lucky to be getting into chief where it is right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 10 years ago or, or longer ago than that because it is such a fabulous program and yeah yep all right i'll suffice to say guys check out our summit we got coming up this is going to be a kick-ass uh event for those that can make it for a week i know it's a big commitment time and money to take that much time and come along uh, do something like this guarantee you'll go away from here being multi times faster with your plans knowing with a ton of knowledge that you're going to get about how to run your business better so we've seen it happen time and time again with these uh with these summits hey michael there you are nice to see you buddy we had a good talk yesterday we'll, we'll go to michael Bach. haven't seen him for a long time michael was at our first first uh wasn't that's what we didn't call it a summit then we just call it a stay and learn event where we were at the ibs it was our first one in las vegas uh 11 years ago something like that we had a great time that was really fun and that's why we continue to do these because they work everybody merry christmas happy new year happy holidays whatever you go by you guys thanks for being here and uh, oh, that's right next yeah. show's in the new year huh? this is the last mm -hmm. show this is it. Man, we'll, we'll we needed see. a send off. Yeah, we'll, cool. we'll see you next year, man. All right. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everybody.